What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we're going to be talking about Dropsy. Alright guys, so today we're going to be talking about Dropsy and things involving that. And uh, if you noticed I redid his tank a little bit and all he's doing is going around looking at the bottom because I filled in all of his holes. So he's a little upset with me at the moment. What's the matter, bud? Are you not happy? Huh? Are you not happy? Oh, you're ecstatic. <laughs> so anyway, Dropsy. I'm sure every single one of us as fish keepers has had the experience of keeping a fish that ends up getting dropsy and usually they end up dying from it, right? Because there's not a lot of ways to fix it um, and most people when they see one of their fish get dropsy they automatically assume it's a lost cause and uh, they just go ahead and they euthanize their fish, you know, just to save them from suffering. and. They do that because they believe that the fish is going to die anyway, so might as well just put an end to its suffering and let them go uh, a lot easier than dragging it out. And I would say that in probably 80% of cases of dropsy that is true, um, because most people catch dropsy far too late to be able to do anything about it. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today, is how you can actually potentially reverse dropsy. Um, so that you can actually save your fish, right? So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, what dropsy is exactly. And dropsy in itself is not an illness, um, but it is a symptom of an underlying ailment, right? So the true cause of dropsy can be multiple things, uh, which is why it's so hard to diagnose um, and also why it's so hard to treat because dropsy can be caused by an internal bacterial infection, uh, it can be caused by internal parasites, it can be caused by a viral infection, um, it can be caused by constipation and severe bloating, um, and it can also be caused by something in the fish's environment, right? So if you're not doing tank maintenance and stuff like that, and uh, poor water quality builds up to a certain extent, it can actually cause dropsy in your fish, and all of these typically result in uh, kidney failure and the fish's body storing extra water which is why you see the uh, the fish swell up and the pine coning effect so if you've never seen a fish with a dropsy I'll go ahead and show you this picture right here this is a goldfish that has dropsy you can see he kind of looks like a pine cone because of the way that his scales are lifting off of his body um, so that's what we mean when we say the pine coning effect um, and when a fish shows signs of dropsy, um, it's being severely affected by its ailment and the internal organs of that fish are getting damaged because of that, because of all the extra water and swelling. It's putting a lot of pressure on the internal organs and actually causing damage to those. Um, and for this reason, dropsy is very difficult to treat and is very often fatal to your fish um, because of that. So. Some symptoms of dropsy when you get them in your fish, uh, you're going to start off seeing a lot of uh, lethargy. Uh, the fish is going to hide a lot and rest on the bottom. It's just going to hide in the corner of the tank. It's just going to sit there not doing anything. Um, it might look a little bit of, a little bit swollen. It might have a distended body, so a little, you know, it might look a little bloated. Um, and that's because of the fluid buildup within the fish. Um, lifting scales, which is the pine coning like what I said. Um, swelling without lifting scales is also possible. Um, usually the lifting scales is the very end stage. Um, and with that, you could potentially have bulging eyes. But usually with dropsy, um, the bulging eyes, it's going to be both eyes at the same time. It's not just going to be one. If you're seeing only one bulging eye, that's more than likely Popeye. Um, and you can treat that with erythromycin to kill the bacterial infection that's causing that. Um, but if you were to catch dropsy early enough, right, if you were able to 
see it and say, okay, I know that's the beginning stage of dropsy. You're seeing the, the lethargy. The fish isn't wanting to eat. It's hiding a lot. Um, you might start in BC. You see the fish isn't eating, but it's still getting bloated a little bit. You know, that's kind of a key sign that, you know, it might be leading to the stages of dropsy. Um, it could be treatable, right, if you catch it early enough. It's not always treatable, but sometimes it is. So if you want to try and save your fish, here's some steps that I can give you to help you uh, give your fish the best chance at survival. Um, so step one would be isolate and quarantine your fish in a well oxygenated aquarium, right? So make sure you're providing a open environment Try not to have any substrate, bare bottoms best, because if they're going to be sitting on the bottom, you don't want to try and have to fight off a bacterial infection from them rubbing their stomach open on any of your gravel or sand or anything like that. Bare bottoms best. Um, put an air stone in there, right? Aerate that water, make sure it's churning over good, lots of oxygenation in the water. After that, use a heater, right? Doesn't matter if your fish are cool water, temperate, warm water, use a heater and get that temp up to 80 to 85 degrees to prevent aeromonas from multiplying. And aeromonas are a bacterial strain that becomes present during the symptoms of dropsy. So it's a specific strain of bacteria that once your fish gets dropsy, this bacteria is inside your fish and it's multiplying, which is causing a lot of these other symptoms. So you'll want to treat that. So something else you want to do, right? Number three is treat with Epsom salts, right? A quarter teaspoon per 10 gallons is all you're going to need for that. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to help draw out the excess fluid buildup within the fish to keep the stress on the internal organs down, right? Because if you can get that water out of the internal cavities of that fish, it's not going to be as stressful for them and they're going to be able to eat a little bit better. They're going to be able to move around and be a little more comfortable. Um, do not use aquarium salt. This will actually cause fluids to build up within the fish and can actually cause you to kill your fish faster because it's going to accelerate the dropsy. Um, so I know we talked about those uh, Aeromonas bacteria strain. So number four, treat with an antibacterial like um, erythromycin, furan-2, bifuran, maricin-2, canaplex. Um, for any bacterial infection, uh, not only for the Aeromonas bacteria, but for any other bacterial infection that might be inside of your fish that could be causing the dropsy. Um, you want to treat with that. And then if it could be caused by a parasitic infection, you may also want to uh, feed a medicated food uh, to better help the treatment of the internal parasites because you're delivering that food directly to the intestines where the parasites are going to be um, to have your best chance at killing them quickly. For feeding foods like that, generally the fish are going to try to avoid them because they're not going to taste very good because they've got the medications added in. Um, so you may have to use um, something like garlic guard, right? Soak your food in that. The garlic is going to be a uh, attractant for the fish to help them eat it a little bit better. So you might have to use something like that to entice your fish to eat. So you might have to do that. Number five, keep doing this for about two weeks. Right? If you're not seeing any improvement within two weeks and you feel like your fish is getting worse, chances are they probably are. And there isn't something that you can do because your fish might be too far along within the stages of dropsy. Um, and the internal organs might be too far gone to be able to bring it back. Um, so if after two weeks of treating, it doesn't look like your fish has begun to improve at all and you feel like euthanasia is the better option, um, you absolutely can do that. Um, but usually if you're going to see a turnaround in your fish before two weeks is when it's going to be apparent that it's working, he's digging a hole. Um, so that's the time frame for that. So if your fish isn't going any better, go ahead and euthanize if you feel that's the better option or just let your fish live its life out um, in the quarantine tank. So depending on how soon or how severe the ailment is depends on your success rate on curing dropsy. Um, so this treatment isn't a guarantee, um, but it's the best shot that you've got at helping your fish with dropsy and getting your fish back to good health. Um, so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching Trafish Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video.